In this lecture, we are going to look at free will. Free will means basically that everyone has a choice in what they do. And we are not puppets. And we all have choices in life. And we, we have a choice. We can make a choice independent of any external entity. And there is a question from time immemorial because of religious and other kinds of beliefs that is God controlling the world or are we in charge of our destiny? So let's look at a cartoon. So Calvin and Hobbes are going by. Calvin said, I decided to be fatalist. All events are preordained and unalterable. Whatever will be, will be. That way if anything bad happens, it's not my fault. It's fate. And the tiger trips him. Too bad. You were fated to do that. That wasn't fate. So in this case, Calvin realizes that he got tripped and it's not fate. He, there's actually a choice and a choice was made by the tiger. Anyway, so what is free will? Free will is the ability of agents uh, like people, including animals, to choose from the available alternative futures. The idea is that we saw in logic of time is future is not fixed, it's not decided. We only live in the present moment and we have choices and we can choose any of them and it's up to us to choose. And we have a strong sense of freedom which leads us to believe that we have free will. Now we have a moral dilemma. How do we res assign responsibility for actions if they are caused entirely by our past events? So everything that happens in the past causes us to do new things. And who is responsible for the actions that we do, what we do in life? Our feelings that we are free to choose an action is simp simply an illusion. You can read about it on Wikipedia. So the other theory is that it's an illusion, illusion of choice. That means you think you're making a choice, but it's already decided by God or whoever, or physics, that what will happen will happen based on the laws of physics. So then the next question is why bad things happen? We have we have free to free will to choose our future, but a lot of events are random. People say shit happens. So if you fail the first few times and learn from it, try, keep trying and tr trying again and again till you get it right. So what happens is, people rarely tell you about their failures. They only tell you only things that worked. So in research, people only publish the success stories. When you read a journal, you only see people who are successful or a newspaper. You never see that how many times they actually tried and when they didn't get anywhere. So it's also this is also the logic of choosing the right amount of stuff to the gambler's uh, thing in which you only see the people who are winning lotteries you don't see the people who are losing and as we all know life is random a series of random accidents with some choices in between and then let's look at the science of free will in the scientific view the physical world can be explained by the laws of physics but then uh, in the last century quantum mecha mechanics came along and they said the world is non-deterministic. At quantum level, really nano level, uh, things are, can flip around. You don't really know which way things are going to happen. Uh, so the thing is that like this is about free will. But physics has not, science doesn't really get to the problem of consciousness. We don't even know and understand how the mind thinks or what is the mind, what is the I and what is consciousness. And do we have choice? So there's a lot of science still, science is still, dealing with small problems the big problems even of like disease has not been solved cancer and stuff so forget the idea of consciousness the I and then there's an the illusion of free will what that means is there's a cow he's going into he has a choice of going left or right and both the things lead to the slaughterhouse for example a chicken chicken in the farm they seem to be having a good time but what is their fate they're all going to be eaten one day or made into hamburger so what is fate? Destiny of fate is a predetermined course of events. It means basically, fate is basically when people say it is fated. That means they have no choice. What will happen will happen. It's a predetermined future in general or for an individual. Like it's like saying the fated that the world will end, or fated that he was become a king or a villain. So it's based on the concept that there is a fixed and natural order to the cosmos. And then we have no control over fate. But then we can choose a destiny. So what's the difference between destiny and fate? So one reason people believe in fate is because it's always after the fact, not before the fact. You can't tell who's going to do well or not until after it happens. Then people say it's fate. 
and that happens because people are not able to deal with uncertainty the mind is shallow it cannot deal with things they don't know they'll assign it to some kind of a random reason and say it is fated who decides Preterism is a philosophy that all events in history past present future have been decided by or are known by God fate or some other force including human actions so the question is is that God an omniscient being all knowing of the past future all deciding for everyone this is a comforting factor again because most people are not able to deal with the fact that there's no, there's no, there's no purpose to life and they have to give their own purpose we'll look at it later in, in a later lecture what is the purpose and who's deciding the purpose of life but it's easy to have a god and like not think about it but it, th there's no knowing uh, what if there is a god or not from our point of view so is there anything beyond physics so Cartesian dualism, this is all taken from Wikipedia, holds that mind is a non-physical substance, the seat of consciousness and intelligence, and raises the question how mind and body interact. That's one way. And physical is a, the second way, the philosoph philosophical theory holding that everything which exists is no more than the physical property. And there are no properties which are not physical. So everything, mind, I, your ego, everything is a physical, chemical property of a body. And there's nothing beyond that. Anyway, we don't know the answer yet, and we'll probably be a long time before we know it. But people have been debating on it, and you can debate on it also. Think about it. And what do philosophers say? Spinoza is a great philosopher in ethics. He writes in his book Ethics. We believe ourselves free simply because we are conscious of our actions and unconscious of the causes of those act actions. So what he's saying is basically. If somebody else is controlling actions, we don't know about it and we think we are making a choice, but we are really not making a choice. And Schopenhauer, what did he say? You can do what you will, but in any choice, you will only do one definite thing and absolutely no, nothing else and that, then that one thing that you do. So after you made a choice, you not really had a choice. So is it really choice or not looking backward? And then Swami so Vivekananda made another interesting statement. It is a coward and a fool who says that, that, this, is, that this is his fate. But it is a strong man who stands up and says, I will make my own fate. So, I would prefer that we all win the last thing in which you decide your own fate. Anyway, so, the common question that comes up is, why is there evil in the world? Of course, this is all classical arguments. It may not hold value anymore. To so, the argument of moral evil. If God exists, then God is omnipotent. That means he is all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing and benevolent, nice. Again, this is assuming, these are all assumptions. If God exists and then, if God is omnipotent, omniscient and benevolent, then the world would not contain moral evil. But the fact is that the world contains moral evil. Therefore, God does not exist. This is the proof. But it has a lot of flaws in it. First of all, what is the definition of God? What is omnipotent? What is omniscient? What is benevolent? What is good and bad? That's also not defined. People are not even able to define what is good and what is bad forget like big things like God and what is moral what is evil none of them are defined in fact you can probably think this argument is from a couple of hundred years ago and almost all the questions are open and we don't know the answers but it's important to think about them thank you